Um, look, I get the arguments on both sides. Juveniles aren't adults. You don't want to ruin them for the rest of their lives. But I get the social impact of having a sense of accountability. I get the arguments. I just I want to get a little bit more into the complexity of it, because the odds are if you talk to the mothers who are dealing with the worst thing in the world, which is losing a child, they wind up being uh, very quick advocates for making sure that it can never happen to anybody else. And as we know, crime is complicated. And why this happened is complicated. But we also know that we do very little to stop it in any way. And I mean that as a gun owner uh, across the board, how we educate the kid, how we deal with consequences for kids, how we deal with opportunities for kids, how we deal with avenues to dignity for kids, and how we deal with how our society addresses how people store their weapons, how easily you can get them, where illegal firearms come from, how they're sold. I think we should be addressing all of it. Why would you be closed off to anything that might make you have to do this one less time? Because here's the thing. There's this precious little piece of paper that sits in Washington, D.C. Mm -hmm. It's called the Constitution of the United States. And our founding fathers put the Second Amendment in there for a clear reason. And I get the argument. You know, people talk about their kids dying. But there was a specific reason. And if we as a society think that we cannot be, that time will not repeat itself, you're foolish. That piece of paper you don't think has we can do any better? Can we do better? Oh, absolutely, we can do better. But the better isn't the one focus on one particular thing. You name particular laws that are in place. All we're doing is, is keep compounding, putting law after law after law that has zero effect. Listen, I here in the state of Florida, convicted felon cannot possess a firearm. You know how many convicted felons we come in contact to possess a firearm? Most. The law is ineffective. Yeah, I can well, charge them. Yeah, I mean, look, the argument's about enforcement. It's about availability. I'm not saying it's a panacea. I just, you know, I'm a gun owner. You know what I mean? Obviously, I'm not going to be that big a hypocrite. But uh, I think most gun owners are responsible, uh, store and keep their weapon safely, and don't want just anybody getting them. And back, frankly, most of us are frustrated that nobody knows how to use the weapon, um, that there's really no training that goes along with it. But do you understand why people got fired up that a man who's supposed to be keeping them safe seemed like he didn't care how many guns there were in society when the argument you make, guns don't kill people? Well, none of the things that kill us kill us on their own. Fentanyl doesn't kill you if you don't take it, right? <laughs> Drugs don't kill you if you don't put them in you, but we make them illegal because that's all that can happen if you do. Guns are the same way. That's why we see most of our death is what? Suicide, right? That's the number one gun crime. I'm just saying, are you really that closed off to putting everything on the table? Absolutely. I am. Because here's the one thing. You don't have a constitutional right to take fentanyl or any other drug. You have a constitutional mm -hmm. right to possess a firearm. And as much mm -hmm. as distasteful as it is, even, even people that are out here that, well, we may not like. And if a criminal hasn't done certain things that rises to the level of a felony, even they have the right to possess a firearm. And don't get me wrong, I know people are going to take that statement right there and just run with it or, or make a, something totally out of what I'm saying. Okay? But the fact is, is there is things that you cannot compromise. And that's the Constitution of this United States. You can't. I hear you, but you know the law. You know that it's not an unrestricted right. Uh, and you know that it's only in recent history that we even attached an individual right to it because its original uh, incentive was, of course, derivative of then General Washington, then President Washington and his right for a well-organized and regulated and armed militia so we didn't have to keep giving them weapons. So we've evolved or devolved, depending on your politics. But I just know that we can do better. And when somebody's in charge of keeping us safe, we just hope that they're as open-minded as well, even though you don't, com you don't create the laws, 
but you do have to execute them so, uh, and enforce them. So, Sheriff, I appreciate you coming on to explain your words, and I appreciate you, and I hope you keep your community safe. Thank you, Chris. I appreciate it. Hey, thank you for watching. Please go to NewsNationNow.com, NewsNationNow.com, and you can find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button down below. Then you will get more of NewsNation's fact-driven coverage.